adductors. Peanut butter leaves me greasy. My favorite acronym in all of anatomy. Peanut butter leaves me greasy. Pectineus, adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus, and gracilis. These are more or less in order of attachment on the femur, too. Well, till here, and then it's attachment on the tibia. But you guys get what I'm saying? So the adductors kind of go like this. They kind of splay out, each one getting a little longer than the last one. So they all go from pubis to femur, which means they'll probably contribute to a little bit of what? Good call, as well as? A little bit of flexion, right? Because they're in front of the hip. So they'll contribute a little bit to flexion, a little bit to internal rotation, as well as a whole lot to adduction. But we have a couple with some special functions. The gracilis is the only adductor to cross the knee. All right? And it crosses behind the knee and attaches to the inside of the tibia. So other than these, the gracilis will also contribute to what? If it goes behind the knee, then it contributes to flexion. knee flexion. If it attaches to the inside of the tibia, tibial internal rotation. Nice job. We only have one more addition to this. And it's the muscle so big, we literally have to divide it in two. Magnus means big, right? Like that's what that word means. Your adductor magnus is so big, it goes from pubis to ischial tuberosity. So you have a group of fibers that run in front of the hip and then a posterior head that actually runs behind the hip, right? You guys with me? So, the anterior portion of the adductor magnus we're fine with. However, we have to make like a, a note here that the posterior adductor magnus if it goes behind the hip, what is it going to contribute to? Extension and external rotation. Is it still going to contribute to adduction? Yes, it's an adductor. 